Well, hello again from Kingston, where we're just about to enter the Labor Day long weekend holiday. And I'd like to wish all the workers and their families, as well as everybody who follows this channel, the very best on that holiday. You won't be surprised to hear there's been a great deal going on. And at the end, the wildlife's pretty special this week. So please watch to the end and consider subscribing. I'm very grateful for every subscriber. Thanks again. Take care. Bye for now. This is how things looked going into the long weekend. We'll come back to it in due course, but this week we're going to deal with themes. They say the devil's often in the detail, and this week members of the bar construction team devoted some painstaking time and attention to levelling and then grouting in place manholes on Gore Road. These things may seem like small details, but they all contribute to the fine finish of the approach to the bridge, and they're all important. With asphalt in place, bar's attention on the west side turned to the margins. Equipment had to be repositioned, and the delicate touch of a skilled operator was applied to some of the areas around the main roadway. Bar contributed too to the continuing removal of gravel from the temporary causeway. Black and MacDonald continued the work of installing lamp posts on the west end. Their team has an extensive role to play too in fitting junction boxes and all the other electrical installations on the bridge itself. At the junction of Gore Road and Point St Mark Drive, a meeting between Utilities Kingston and Black and MacDonald likely led to the handover of the traffic signals on that intersection. But only, of course, after appropriate programming and testing. Throughout the week, the outloading of the major components removed from the temporary trestle roadway has continued. More await removal, and there are still five trestle spans to be pulled from the river. Much of the work on the project is high profile and quite conspicuous, but there's an aspect to the work that often goes unnoticed. This is the removal of the smaller temporary structures, such as brackets, that have supported guardrails or worked underneath the bridge to support concrete work and other tasks. Since we already mentioned concrete, it should be pointed out that there were three pours this week. All of them required careful preparation None more so than the expansion joint on Pier 20. The precise fitting of these joints is particularly critical. Monday afternoon's pour was on the north wall of the easternmost spans. On Wednesday afternoon, the time came to pour the expansion joint over Pier 20. It only remains to pour one more of the six expansion joints, and work is already taking place to prepare it. The final pour of the week occurred on Thursday afternoon and saw the median wall and the south walls poured.
This is how things looked on Monday over the navigation channel. Note the bucket lift on the span that has been deliberately left on the right side of the picture and the number of trestle pieces already removed. The bucket was quickly in use, allowing workers access to remove the cables and pulleys that had suspended the lift bridge. Then it was time to lift the top rails off the lift bridge. Next to go were the mighty pillars that had formed the uprights. Each required lift points to be cut in the pile. By Wednesday afternoon, material was being cleared from the remaining span. On Thursday, things got really serious and we started to see the crane mats and the girders removed from the western span. Last to be taken away were the massive crossbeams that had supported the deck of the trestle. Which left this scene as we go to wildlife. Well, I hope you agree, that was uh, a pretty special week. Not so many more weeks to go, but make sure that you don't miss a thing by looking at this channel and following along with the updates. Bye for now.